they could have come in and yeah we're sat here discussing timings well of, of course the the um time zones <laughs> change as well i think next week 30 thanks ian so uh, so it's going to be even more of a head it, it, it's being recorded guys so i'm, I'm just don't seem just to have so an you option know. I don't have an option to stop the time it. Zone. <laughs> okay, I don't have an option to stop it either. It doesn't want to let me stop it. Um, uh, hello to anyone who is tuning into this recording. No, there's um, nobody there. It's okay. <laughs> there's, there's no one there. We're just having technical difficulties. So if we just remember to ask them to not post this video. <laughs> well, I, I think I can probably delete it. I think. Hmm. But for some reason, normally if you're the host, you can stop and start the video. But it's not. There's no button. Um, where, where's you know Hamza, what? by the way? Oh, it's the Hamza told me he couldn't come. Okay. This has been recorded in. Okay. <laughs> but, I, but I will delete it. Um, yeah, so there's no one's turned up, and that could be oh, because it's. Emma's upside down. <laughs> and Emma's Emma's like, myself. Just going, what's happened? <laughs> I'm really sorry, guys. Why are you saying sorry, it's Matthew? Not, it's not bad. your I feel, fault. I feel responsible. It's not your fault. Matthew, so she's hanging up right now, and I think she's fine. <laughs> she's perfectly happy. Oh, but it's not your fault, Matthew, is it? It's just one of those things. It's just the way it is now. Like, people don't want to do virtual. No, I know. Oh, Tell but me it's about not it. your fault. Tell me about it. You, you should have seen the, uh, the uh, event last week. It was heaving. Uh, I, I I used your commentary and what you said as a justification for why we should be back in market. But anyway, what 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 I think is, if we get to ten past and there's no one here, we come then, back at yeah, and, and we'll record it at four o'clock, whether anyone shows up or not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds okay. good. The I'll, only I'll... thing with the four o'clock is that I have got a man coming to fit a cat flap at five. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll squeeze it in beyond. before the cat flap, I promise. <laughs> yeah, I'll can relocate please, myself. Can you get that into the into the presentation at some point? Yeah, construction project management. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the feline world. Can yeah, no just use the, the recording from when we did it before? We could, but I guess our fees are incorrect. You're very I clever, suppose yeah. it's a bit slightly yeah. out of date. Yeah. Uh, I, I just sent you a picture of what my cats are doing at the moment. Diane oh, loves a phone. cat story, don't you, Diane? I haven't gotten fame with me, so I can't. Just oh, <laughs> It's just fluff and legs. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't have cats, do you, Diane? No. No. In fact, I just, I just took delivery of a few cat repellent things from Amazon. Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, so I have those as well. from the neighbourhood come in and shit in my garden because oh, I haven't got any of the cats. And I'm surrounded by dogs. So they come in here because there's no dogs. And I go out there and I slip around in cat shit. <laughs> so actually the same is true if you the have meeting indoor is being cats. recorded. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have indoor cats, like other cats that are outdoor cats, see my cats and decide to mark their territory like around our house. So... It, it, the same applies. We actually have cat repellers as well, like in our garden. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Do they work? Reason. I've only just um, got them. No, what have you so, got? They're like um, these. It's like a green box that makes this like loud noise. That's what I've got. This cat that looks like an owl and yeah. it's solar panel, uh, solar powered, and yeah. it goes. Ee! Yeah, and if you walk into its path, you're like, "What? What was that?" Because you, your ears nearly burn off. Okay. It doesn't Ma work. Ma Matthew's like, this is being recorded, but I will delete <laughs> it. <laughs> it's all right, Matthew. It's going to be, going to be deleted. Oh, dear. It's glorious. Hey, how frustrated with dry scan. Uh, what was it like staying in a hotel again, Matthew? It was, yeah, it was just all so normal, apart from having to wear a mask everywhere in the hotel. And everywhere around Dubai. Um, Did you? Yeah, yeah like this. How about on the, up on the on plane? On the plane as well. Yeah, yeah. But you just kind of got on with it. I, like, I, wore, I wore one of these, um, and they're, you know, quite easy to breathe through, aren't they? As opposed to my LJME one that's kind of thick and, um, mm. yeah. Just, just kind of got on with it, really. It just, 
uh, mm. felt very normal being around Dubai. It was very busy because of the expo and um, lot, loads of tourists. I, I think it felt like it. Um, don't bother going to expo if you if you get a chance. Um, Did I you went go? Down the, I went down on the Sunday or the Monday evening, uh, and you, they've extended the metro, so you can go all the way there on the metro. So that was okay, and it was quite quiet because if you're heading, heading in that direction, no one's really going there apart from tourists for the thing. Um, but it's just a massive site. And they've got all these pavilions. I made the mistake of going to the UK one, which is absolutely crap. Um, you know, I was feeling all loyal and British, and you know, that was, that was just like uh, disappointing. So I think I went in three or four. I went in the Moroccan one from, and chatted some. Is Moroccan there fellas. any? Go on. Sorry, interrupted. Um, the UK one. Is there any sign of uh, De Montfort in it? Because so, so it... I, I, that's what I was expecting, and. and I don't know what happened with that. Now, whether, um, so what I do know is that De Montfort have now taken over, I think, the old Harriet Watts campus. So De Montfort have set up a campus in, in Dubai. Um, the, 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 I don't know if say LJMU, sorry, the UK pavilion is basically this very impressive architectural thing outside with all these lights and words. You can probably Google it and find it. But then you have to kind of walk up, snaking up to walk up and snake down and you can basically go inside and look at this thing from the inside with the light but that's it very little there and like as you go up you know if you go to like i don't know a museum in london and maybe you you walk around and there's maybe some um flat display cabinets and you'd look into that display cabinet and you'd see i don't know some some bones from some old geezer or something so as you're going up this snaking path it's like that so imagine it's hot in the evening to buy it and it's a nightmare if it's a day you've got this kind of snaky path to go up that you have to walk up you think you're going to see something and there's like display cabinets you have to peer over but you don't really know what's there i didn't notice it going up coming down i noticed it and there was like lego in them and meccano i was like just really disappointing um was there not that you could type a word in and it gets displayed on the oh is that what the... it was is that what well, it was this is... Well, because I went to the, the grand unveiling of the what the theme is going to be and the person who designed it was there because I was thinking, uh, God, okay. if this was in England, it would be full of rude words that we're all... Well, yeah, ah, is that what it was? Well, I was that was completely lost on me because I was just disappointed that I had to walk up this thing and there was no way. And when I got to the top, it was so disappointing. I did take a photograph uh, uh, inside and out, but I, I and there were lots of different words. I, I, that was completely missed on me. Uh, I just oh. thought it was pretty rubbish. Um, so, yeah, I heard all that talk about De Montfort being involved. Now, whether they're involved in some of the kind of, um, you know, the, the expo is themed around sustainability and, and future workplaces and different things. So whether like in the kind of thematic discussions and days, they're going to be involved in that with the Brits, I don't know. Um, no, but but the actual, we'll our actual pavilion was rubbish. We, we nearly took over that campus, you know. So did uh, we. Yeah. So did we. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, we, uh, and we looked at it and we're like, no. I think we got very, very close to signing, but then there were some issues with the, the people that run the place. Yeah, it might have been the same for us. Yeah. It was something to do with the staffing. I think that they wanted us to employ the staff, but they managed the there was some controversy to do with staffing yeah. So but LJ, you have my... a, we've got a part a partner in charge called Westford who delivers some of our programs, so it's not a campus. Um, and they were, he was chatting to me about it because he said that yeah, Harriet Watt kind of came to the end of their 10 year contract with that particular company and now they've walked away from it and now they've got their own separate somewhere else, different location in Dubai. So maybe that's the reason. Yeah. Maybe it was it's to in the middle of the, nowhere, that campus as well, if you've ever been. There's nothing there. Academic City. Or is it the other one? Is it Academic City or the other one? It's the it's the quiet one. It, so it must be academic city and education city is the busy one, isn't it? Where uh, all the agents okay. are. So yeah, it's not yeah. there. It's another one that's literally okay. middle of desert. But isn't that where Birmingham is as well? Yes. So what he the guy, the guy from Westford, our partner, he said that the way that project works is you're charged uh, based on the square on the square meter that you rented, and you're only allowed to have a certain percentage. Um, for lectures to be taught. So you've got to have a lot of wider space for, I guess, sports facilities, university accommodation. And so he says that really restricts universities as to how many students they can physically get on the campus at the right time. We have an attendee, people. Oh. 
Hello, thanks for joining us. We're going to start shortly. Thanks very much. Okay, so I think um, we'll make a start. Um, I'll start by sharing my screen. I think that'll be a good start. And thank you to those that have joined us today. Um, today, we're going to be talking quite a general presentation about um, studying in the UK um, and um, all the different options and things you need to know about that, really. Let me just open up the slides. Can everyone see this? Okay, well, now, can everyone see this okay? Yeah, okay, brilliant. So um, today you've got five universities with us. We've got, um, I am from uh, the University of Portsmouth down on the South Coast. Jill, do you wanna go next? Yeah, I'm from the University of Central Lancashire, which is up in the Northwest of England. Ian? Hi there, yeah, my name's Ian. I'm from Northumbria University, Newcastle in the city of Newcastle in the Northeast of England. And Diane? Hi, I'm Diane from the University of Kent, located in the city of Canterbury, just in the southeast corner of the UK. And finally, Matthew. Yep, and I'm Matthew from uh, Liverpool John Moores University. We're in Liverpool, which is about 40 minutes from Manchester, two hours north of London. All right, brilliant. So, um, 10 reasons to study in the UK. I'm sure there are many more than that, but we thought we'd try and round it up to 10. Um, and see how we get on from there, basically. Um, so today we're going to go through kind of all the all the well the ten reasons. So um, that we're open for business. Uh, we have flexible admissions policies. Um, you can study after you graduate. So you, sorry, you can stay on. You can study after you've graduated, but also you could stay on and work. Um, more about work and careers, um, but also about our universities and how uh, UK universities are world renowned. Um, we are in fantastic locations. The UK generally is a fantastic location. It's a multicultural place and we do offer financial benefits to international students. We have amazing support and great social life as well. So these are the kind of key topics that we're going to cover today. So starting with we are open for business. So obviously it has been um, a very, very difficult time for everyone across the world since um, yeah early 2020. Um, obviously, universities did close. We've been working online and teaching online, uh, but universities are now open again across the UK. So our campuses are open. Students can study on campus, but most universities are allowing some flexibility with that. So for this intake, but I can't speak for future intakes, we are offering some blended learning, which means that you can um, study uh, partially online and partially on campus um, and there is some flexibility. So at Portsmouth this year for this intake we've got students arriving on campus at the moment and have already arrived. We're encouraging all students to come on campus at the moment but we are allowing students who haven't maybe got their visas or having problems with isolating once they arrive into the UK to study online for the next few weeks, months. Our campuses have changed, so we have made them um, much more safe in terms of COVID safe. So we've got, uh, you know, access points where people can go in one door and out the other. Um, we definitely don't have lecture theatres full of students anymore. We try and keep people um, socially isolated. So um, sitting further apart from each other, not having hundreds and hundreds of people in one lecture theatre, keeping the class 
The class is smaller in terms of sizes and things like that. Um, we all have um, medical centres on our campuses. Some campuses um, were offering testing um, facilities during the main pandemic, which is something that we could all open again if things got worse again. Um, but we also, um, some universities are also offering the vaccine. So it's worth looking into what the universities are doing in terms of COVID and, you know, what they can offer you um, if you could gain the vaccine while you're over. And there's definitely testing facilities available as well. In terms of our admissions policies, they haven't really changed too much. One of the ways that they probably have changed would be the English stuff things. So we will accept a range of English um, qualifications now. So things like instead of just IELTS, we can accept things like Duolingo, TOEFL at home, all sorts of other things as well. Um, but also in terms of our general admissions policy, um, all universities have got some flexibility. We will take students from all over the world. So we're not just looking for students with a British curriculum. Um, we can accept, you know, um, Indian curriculum, Pakistani curriculum, the local Thanawea curriculum as well. Um, it's all about what grades you've got, which curriculum you've studied at. Also, sometimes it can be about the university you've studied at um, and the country and everything like that. But basically, our admissions teams are qualified to understand every uh, qualification. And if they don't know for sure, they would look into it. So it's always worth putting an application in. And then we will come back to you um, with an offer or more questions if we've got them. OK. We do hope that students don't worry about applying, but I know that that's not always the case. So do put the application in. And if you have any concerns, it's always worth getting in contact with people um, like us, ourselves, the people that are here today representing the university, all the admissions teams, and they can help you with any concerns you've got um, whilst you're waiting for your application to be processed. Another good thing about the UK is that we now offer a post-study work visa. This is a graduate route visa available to anyone who graduates from a UK degree um, and, from a, and, and has a valid visa. So this is not restricted by nationality. It's not restricted by course. Um, as long as you have successfully completed your degree in the UK, you can switch to a post-study work visa. And this visa will allow you to work in any area at any salary level. Um, so you could spend um, some time earning some money back or getting some work experience while you build up your experience to hopefully get to a, a higher ranked level. And that will be for a full two years. And there's no cap on numbers for that. So there really is a lot of flexibility. And this is proving to be very popular this year as students are graduating now from master's degrees and they're going on to this visa for the first time in a number of years. Career and work opportunities. So obviously um, I've already mentioned the graduate route. So that is one way that you can gain career experience is swapping onto a, a graduate visa. Um, but also during your studies, when you're actually studying, um, there's lots of opportunities to work. And this will build up your transferable skills. Um, if you come onto a course such as a business degree, we offer a third year placement year, which means that you could go and work in industry for a year. It would be a paid job and it would gain lots of work experience during that year. Um, you could also work part time during your studies. You're allowed to work 20 hours part time when you're studying. Um, and some of the work experience that people get and they build up their experience within their course would be things like the law clinic. So this is opportunity to kind of get an idea what it would be like to be a, um, a solicitor, working with clients, speaking to people about their problems. And the law clinic allows people from outside of the university to come in and talk to our students about situations where they may need to access um, a lawyer. Um, and there's lots of um, examples of that within universities. All universities have a large careers team. So a, a team there who are built just to um, support you in your um, future careers, whether that be um, on campus or after you study. And 
normally you can access that careers service for up to five years once you've graduated. <clears throat> they will help you with your CV, <clears throat> applying applications, um, interview techniques, all sorts of different things. Um, a lot of universities also hold um, a graduate fair every year, which means that employers get their opportunity to promote their jobs that are coming um, to the, the area that you're studying in. We also do encourage students to um, volunteer when they're studying with us. So that again goes back to those transferable skills. It's not just enough about, just, it's not enough anymore just to have a degree. You do need to gain some work experience. And volunteering is an opportunity for you to kind of try out different areas, maybe help with a, a, a within a charity, in the community, wherever your, your university is based. There's loads of opportunities for volunteering and your careers team can help you um, find out more about that. And I've already mentioned the placements. So that would mean that after you, in your second year of your undergraduate degree, you could um, consider going on placement year and start applying for jobs. Normally, um, courses will have placements that students have gone into in previous years. Um, and that's one way, one way to start. Or you may have your own um, contacts and you might want to apply for them yourself. Um, a lot of faculties have their own placement offices and they're there to, again, support you finding your placements and applying for them. And I've already mentioned that you can work part time for 20 hours a week. Universities in the UK are really world renowned. So um, we've had a reputation as, of being great at teaching and educating people for hundreds of years. And we've got universities such as Oxford and Cambridge that have been around for, for many, many years. But you will find a lot of the universities that are considered modern. They've also been around for a long time, but they didn't become universities until 1992. And that's when a lot of universities went from polytechnics and institutions to a university. And the university I work for was one of them. Um, but we've been teaching degrees since the 1800s. So lots of experience, well-recognized, um, a good reputation. And going to a university in the UK will only enhance your degree. Um, it looks great to have studied in the UK. It will look great to, to study in English um, and be able to speak um, a number of languages as well. Um, and we can assure you that the teaching in the UK is very good. So there is a lot of um, quality assurance within the universities. External people come in to check on the quality of teaching and academics are really accountable for their teaching now. Um, there's always a student survey at the end of each year to see um, how well a university is doing and academics um, have to look at the feedback from their students to see if students are happy, where their problems are, things like that. So very, very accountable for teaching. The UK has some of the highest ranked universities in the world. If you look at world rankings, there's so many UK universities based in there, particularly the top 20 universities. Um, but the rankings vary, so it's worth checking out different rankings for different courses as well, and don't just go on one ranking, just the world ones. We are modern, well-equipped, and universities in the UK are constantly updating their facilities, making sure they've got the best sports facilities for their students, the best um, labs, um, everything to do with their teaching is, is, is kind of top quality state of the art as well. The locations of UK universities are up and down the country. So wherever you want to be based, as long as you're meeting the grades that university's got, you can uh, go there. So obviously we've got the London universities and there are a number of universities based in London, but don't just think of London as the only option because there are so many fantastic locations. Um, you know, whether it be down on the south, which is where I'm based, or right up in the north, which is where my colleague Ian is based. We've got fantastic cities, beautiful countryside, um, lovely beaches, loads of interesting places to visit. So whatever your, um, your needs or your requirements, it's worth doing a bit more research into the university that you're, you're interested in. Another thing about universities is, is kind of where the actual uni is based. So some universities are based in a city centre. 
Some universities are based on a campus outside of a city or in a smaller town, and students might love that. They feel very safe on a campus um, and they um, don't want to be in the kind of hub of a really busy city. But also cities and towns vary in size and population and uh, everything like that. So it's really worth doing your research into that when you are looking at um, the places to study. The UK is a very diverse country. Uh, wherever you are in the UK, it is, it is diverse and universities tend to be very diverse places. So for example, um, at Portsmouth, where I'm based, we've got over 130 different nationalities on campus. And a lot of universities are the same as that. <clears throat> we get students coming in from all over the world. They make our population in the cities really exciting and varied, and we really try and promote that as well. We are a tolerant society. We've always had people coming here from all over the world. Um, and we are also, you know, lots of us are very well traveled as well. So we are, always encouraging people to come into the UK um, to study with us, to work with us as well. There is a lot of religious freedom in the UK. You will find every religion under the sun in the UK, um, depending on where you're based and, um, and what the population's like in, that, in those cities. So it does vary across the country, but we um, do have a lot of religious freedom and whatever religion you are, you can practice that within the UK. And with that comes loads of interesting food, lots of cultural options. So in um, all towns and cities in the UK, you will find a diverse range of, of um, uh, shops and also restaurants as well. Um, we like our international food. You will find halal food in the UK um, and also food from all over the world and Europe as well. And we like to vary our diet and eat um, from elsewhere. I've already mentioned the diverse student population. Um, if you join a UK university, you will meet people from everywhere in the UK, um, in the world, and you will make friends from all over the world. And that really um, allows you to kind of get a really different um, perspective on life um, when you have friends from everywhere in the world. And of course you will meet people from all over the world. I've already mentioned that. So students are always worried about the financial side of things. So, and that's completely understandable. Um, degrees are expensive. Uh, wherever you go, they are expensive. But in the UK, they tend to be shorter than a UK from somewhere like America or Canada. So a UK undergraduate degree is three years. Um, America, it's four years. Um, a UK postgraduate degree is one year and America is two years. And that's just one example. There are other countries that do the same as America, but that's something to be aware of. And it makes, hopefully it keeps it um, less costly for you. We do have scholarships available. And when we each talk about our different universities, we will mention the scholarships. Um, it does vary depending on the university and on the nationality of the student as well. But it's always worth doing some digging into the websites and finding out more about the scholarships that are available. The living costs in the UK can be quite reasonable. Um, you've got representatives here from all over the UK, from all over England, but not from London. Living costs in London are very pricey um, and you will not get away uh, with paying a small amount for rent, but elsewhere in the UK, it can be a lot cheaper. So it's worth um, looking at that when you're kind of doing your research into the university. What's the cost of living in that city? Um, how much will it be for rent and food and getting around as well? UK universities have become very good at supporting their students. They want students to be happy um, and feel looked after. Um, and this all goes back to the things like we're very accountable for our students and our teaching now. So this all goes into that. So every student will get a personal tutor when they start. And that tutor is there to help them throughout their degree. So any problems you have during your degree, you must head to your personal tutor, but there are so many other people in the universities who can support you as well. We have academic support um, in each faculty. There's also academic support in terms of if you're having issues with essay writing or referencing, you can go to a team of people who can support you with that. I always say to students, um, 
It's don't just sit there quietly struggling. You must speak to people. We can't tell when you've got 26,000 students in the university, we can't always tell when one particular student is struggling. And this is when you need to put your hand up, speak to your personal tutor, go to those people who are there in the university to help you. And then you will get that support. Again, with English language, there's always an English team in the university who can help you. Even when you've joined us and you've met the right IELTS or English levels, you can still struggle with academic English writing and things like that. So please do speak up and we can direct you to the right people. There's always a housing team there. They're there to help you find housing, but also there to help you if you have any issues with that housing once you're on campus. We always have um, a team of student advisors who are on campus to help you with anything to do with visas. And even once you've left or you're in between studies and you're having to swap onto a new visa or anything like that, that's when our student advisors step in to help out. I've already mentioned the careers team and we have a wellbeing team for anyone who's struggling with their, their mental health or anything to do with just not feeling very good about themselves. Um, again, you mustn't be quiet about it, you must speak up. We take students from a whole range of nationalities and backgrounds. Um, and if you do have any form of disability, then you must again speak up. That can go onto your initial form um, and we will that will be flagged once you're coming into the university and we will contact you about um, uh, some support, whatever that may be, whether that's physical support or mental support. And every um, university has a student's union. The union is there, it's run by students and it's there to support students. So it's very much an external provider who can help you if you've got any concerns or issues that are you, you want to talk to an external person um, about it. So very much there for the students. And that's where a lot of the clubs and societies are also based. And going into that, this is where hopefully you will gain a great social life. You're going into a new place with friends from all over the world and from the UK, and hopefully you're gonna have lots of fun. Um, you're gonna meet new people. And one way to do that is to join our clubs and societies. So you can see um, even that is just some of the clubs and societies that are available at universities. And if there isn't a club that you want to join, but you think actually I could round up a few people and start a new club, then that's something you can approach your union about. So anything at all you'd like to do, whether that be playing football or jumping out of an aeroplane, you can do that at university. Um, and lots of universities um, arrange trips and events and um, uh, travel as well. So people do travel abroad as well when they're studying. So lots of opportunities for you to get involved. So I think that comes to the end of the 10 reasons to study in the UK. And we've just got each um, university's slide now. And this is for the University of Portsmouth, which is where I'm based. I've already mentioned it's on the South Coast. So it's a seaside destination. And you will find, find the South Coast to be a sunny destination, one of the sunniest in the UK. Um, you can see that we are near London, but we're not in London. So about 90 minutes on the train. And we accept students from a huge range of different curriculums. So um, if you're doing A-levels, it would be about three Bs, two Bs and a C, something around that level, going into year one of an undergraduate degree. We offer foundation years and we also have um, discounts on our degrees. So you can call them a scholarship. I like to call them a discount because they're for a huge range of nationalities and it's £1,600 for the first year that you study. We also have larger scholarships of £5,000. 10 different nationalities can access that and it is merit-based. So if you are doing very well in your exams, please go onto our website and have a look at the scholarship called the Chancellor's Global Academic Merit Scholarship. And you might be able to access that um, if or apply for it at least. In terms of um, fees, we are looking at fees of around 15,500 to 17,600 pounds per year that you study. Um, and it depends on the course that you are studying. We ask for a 3,500 pound deposit and then you can pay in two installments uh, during the year. 
Okay, so that's everything about Portsmouth and hopefully it's given you an insight into studying in the UK in general as well. I'm going to pass on to the University of Central Lancashire and Jill. Thanks, Emma. Uh, yep, so we are the University of Central Lancashire and we're based up in the northwest of England in a city called Preston. And as you look at the picture on the screen, we are the red dot with the massive sign that says UCLan. Uh, so we're right there in the northwest. We are a city campus. So you've got all the shops, restaurants, cafes, bars, um, museums, cinemas, everything like that handy. But we're also quite countryside as well. So there's a river that flows through the heart of the city, which then brings with it all this beautiful greenery, lots of park areas that you can go to and relax as well. So it's a nice mix of everything. Um, in terms of our location to the rest of the UK, because you might not have heard of Preston, we are about two hours on a direct train to London. It's about three hours to Edinburgh. So it's a nice central location that allows you to easily go and explore the rest of the UK and make use of your time while you're here to really explore the country. The airport that you would fly in and out of that we would recommend anyway is Manchester International and that's really easy to get to and there's lots of direct flights uh, to lots of different locations across the Middle East and North Africa so for that as well it's a really handy campus. It's a multicultural city, it's one of the UK's most affordable cities for students so hopefully that means that you'll have that little bit of extra cash that you can then just really enjoy your time here to explore uh, and to try new things. We've got about about 400 different bachelor programs so we do have a lot of different courses available so we really would recommend that you check us out uh, on the internet on the web go through our web pages um, we have quite a flexible admissions policy so the entry points are mid-range so a levels we're looking at two b's and a c the ib we're looking for points from hl and cbse it's around 60 percent and that should give you access to most of our programs the tuition fees are um it's a flat rate now so for our standard courses at bachelor level it's a fee of fourteen thousand two hundred and fifty pounds per year but you would be eligible for additional bursaries and scholarships and you don't need to apply for those our admissions team will do that work and apply the relevant bursaries and scholarships to your record we have medicine um it's a five-year program it's forty six thousand pounds per year and unfortunately there's no scholarship for that one and i will hand over to the next person I was going to say, I think, I think that's me. Thank you very much, Jill. Thank you very much. That's really informative. Um, my name's Ian. I work for Northumbria University, Newcastle. If you are unfamiliar with the UK, we are based right up in the northeast of England. If you were to look at a map of the UK, however, we would probably look like we were kind of in the middle. If you've been following the news recently, you may have seen that our football club has been taken over by the... Um, uh, by the uh, Saudis and um, we're very excited about that it's going to bring a lot of investment and a lot more um, input from the Middle East coming into our region. Our city is a medium-sized city we have about 250,000 people live within the city centre and about one in five or one in six of the people that live there are students so it's a city that's very much geared towards um, a student population so as a result there's lots of um, art lots of restaurants lots of culture our university actually welcomes in about 130 plus uh, nationalities a year as well um, similar to what emma was saying about portsmouth um, before some of the things that we really pride ourselves on is that we are a university that uh, offers practical courses. So there's a lot of opportunity there for you to undertake internships or work experience opportunities as part of our courses. Um, we we're, we're second in the UK for, for enterprise. We have a very entrepreneurial spirit. And we're also very proud that um, we are now in the top 30 in the Guardian league tables as well. Talking of which about our, our city being a very student uh, focused city and we're consistently rated one of the top uh, student cities within the UK so it's definitely worth uh, checking out what we offer and we offer over 200 undergraduate programs around about 200 postgraduate programs as well university of 30,000 plus we are a big university so go onto our website 
have a look at what we offer. In terms of tuition, we charge for most of our courses £16,000 per year. Um, however, we do have a guaranteed scholarship. So this is our global scholarship is worth £3,000 in the first year of study. And you don't have to take any additional steps, similar to what Jill was saying about UCLan, um, to apply for that. And uh, so in your first year of study, you would pay £13,000 for your first year of study. Our entry requirements at A-level would be the equivalent of 1A and 2Bs. However, we do accept a multitude of international qualifications. And it's very easy to just get in touch with our applicant services team, tell them what your qualifications are, and we can tell you what our expectations would be um, based on your current qualifications. And uh, that's me, and I'll pass over to my next colleague, who is Diane. Hi, thanks, Ian. Um, good afternoon, evening. Uh, my name is Diane Weston from the University of Kent. Uh, we are loca located down here in the southeast corner of the UK. Um, so we're about um, an hour from the centre of London. We've got two campuses. Um, our main campus is near the city of Canterbury and the other is in an area called Medway. So both of them within easy access of London and um, the major airports of Heathrow and Gatwick. We've also got two specialist postgraduate centres in Europe, in Brussels and Paris. Um, Canterbury itself is a beautiful, very old medieval city. Um, this is the cathedral, which is very famous in the UK and where your graduation ceremony um, would be. And here is the campus. So we are a campus university. Everything is all together in one place, about 20 minutes walk from the centre of Canterbury. And here you've got your teaching, accommodation, sports facilities, socialising, theatre, cinema, medical centre, everything all in one place, surrounded by lovely green parkland. Um, we're split into seven divisions, so we cover a wide variety of programmes. Um, our most popular ones really in the Middle East region will be um, business, law, politics and international relations. And then we've got computing and engineering programmes and biosciences. But we've got many, many different programmes. Um, we'd be looking um, generally A's, B's, maybe one C at A levels. We look at your higher points in um, IB and we'd require somewhere between 14 and 17. But as everyone else, we accept many different curricula. So um, uh, just uh, let us know if you need any, uh, any um, advice about your school curriculum. Um, we do have scholarships, um, some automatic and some that you apply for. Um, as Emma was mentioning, most of our programmes will have um, opportunities for a one year work placement or to study abroad for a year. Um, you can also do lots of other things in addition to your main study, so you can learn a different language or learn another skill. And we are one of the very few universities in the UK that still has our own University of Kent designed and delivered international foundation programme. So should you need a foundation programme, um, we do our, uh, uh, offer that and you can progress then, uh, you have guaranteed progression onto um, most courses at the university. Lots of different clubs and societies and of course many different accommodation um, possibilities either on campus or in the city of Canterbury off campus. Okay, that's enough from me and I shall move over to Matthew, I believe.
It's not me, but I'm happy to help out. So we have a colleague who works with us who is uh, based at Nottingham Trent University. So I'm happy just to quickly walk you through uh, Nottingham Trent University. For those of you who don't know, um, Nottingham Trent is in the Midlands in the UK. It's a couple of hours from London. Um, it's got a very strong reputation, particularly in the area of employability with over a thousand links uh, with industries across um, different uh, university schools, opportunities for placement years with many undergraduate courses. Um, as you can see, they offer a wide range of undergraduate programs, particularly in the area of art and design, architecture, the built environment, uh, a good reputation for business, for law, for journalism, and some particularly interesting courses in arts and humanities and social science. The fees this year range from between 15,100 to 15,600. And as you'll see, there are scholarships available of 2,000 pounds. Uh, per year of study. So we encourage you to take a look at Nottingham Trent University's website uh, where you can find out some more information about Nottingham Trent. Thank you. If we can pass to the next slide, let's hope it's uh, another one I can talk about. Yes, great, fantastic. So yeah, as I said, I'm from uh, Liverpool, John Moores University in effect. Um, uh, we're based in the Northwest, not far from the city of Manchester, just down the road from UCLan, uh, which Jill was talking about earlier. Uh, and that's about two hours from London. Um, we're very popular with students from uh, the Middle East, the North African region, um, with over 25,000 students from around the world, about 100 countries represented on campus. Uh, particularly strong reputation in the area of engineering, architecture, sports science, our art programs are top 10 in the UK, um, very popular for forensic science, pharmacy. Um, in the engineering field, as I mentioned, um, our programs are particularly popular in electronic engineering, uh, mechatronics, as well as civil engineering. Our tuition fees for 2022 uh, for a business course would be £16,100. For an engineering or science course would be £16,600. And uh, international students, uh, if they are self-funded, uh, so you're not being funded by your government perhaps, if you're a self-funded student, you will be eligible for a £3,000 automatic uh, tuition discount every year. Um, my contact details are on the screen. I'd be delighted to chat with any of you um, afterwards or by um, WhatsApp or by email later uh, about Liverpool John Moore's opportunities here. Thank you very much, Emma. Okay. Um, so I think that is wraps up the presentation um, and you can see there all our different contact details for each university so if you've got any questions for us you can come back to us with that um, has anyone got anything they'd like to add or anything they'd like to say at the end no no i think that's great emma thank you so much uh, thanks yeah. for joining us do take a look at um the strive scan website where you um, can see other sessions that we've already recorded um, that we've done in the last six months and also you can uh, sign up for future presentations that we'll be doing of course uh, I encourage you to tell your friends at school your high school counselor um, to join us and find out about the great opportunities to study in the UK and thanks for joining us today yeah thank you very much bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye.